Hello learners, welcome to Ahmed Coaching and I'm your teacher Dr. Anam. Today we are going to study about RNA and its types. The word RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, R for ribo, N for nucleic and A for acid. Actually, RNA is a polymer of ribonucleotides. When we talk about the polymer, polymer means that many units of ribonucleotides, they are going to combine together to form RNA. Now the question is, what actually the ribonucleotide is? Ribonucleotide is a compound which is made up of phosphate group, ribose sugar and nitrogenous base. These three compounds, they join with each other to form one molecule of ribonucleotide and in our RNA many ribonucleotides they combine with each other to form one RNA molecule here in this diagram you can see that these color lines they are actually ribonucleotide and there are so many ribonucleotides which are combined together to form one molecule of RNA this is the reason that RNA is known as the polymer of ribonucleotides. RNA is actually a single stranded molecule in comparison to the DNA which is a double stranded molecule if you remember the DNA is like this but on the other hand the RNA is a single stranded molecule. The nitrogenous bases which are present in the RNA are divided into two types the pyrimidine and the purines the purine in case of rna and dna are same adenine and guanine while in case of pyrimidine the cytosine base is present in both rna as well as in dna however the fourth base is different and this is the base which makes the difference between rna and dna in case of rna this space is uracil while in case of dna thiamine is present in place of uracil so the nitrogenous bases which are present in rna are actually uracil cytosine adenine and guanine there are three major types of rnas the first one is mrna trna rrna in case of mrna the m stands for the messenger so the mrna is actually the messenger rna as the name indicates it is going to work as a messenger and going to take the information from one part to another part the mrna actually takes genetic message from nucleus to the ribosome the genetic message which is stored in the RNA is taken by the messenger RNA and it will move from the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm where amino acids they are arranged according to the information in the messenger RNA to form the specific proteins. Here you can see this is the process and this part here blue one this is nucleus. In the nucleus we have this DNA. This DNA stores the genetic information and this genetic information is transferred in the messenger mRNA and this messenger RNA is then going to travel from this nucleus to the cytoplasm and this part here is the cytoplasm. So this is messenger RNA and in the cytoplasm this messenger RNA is going to be translated to form the proteins. Now the length of the messenger RNA is variable why it is variable because it is going to depend on the size of the gene or the protein it is going to make if a gene is large in size the messenger rna will have a large size and if the gene is small in size so the messenger rna will have a small size for example if there is a protein which is made up of thousand amino acids so to encode or to produce a thousand amino acid protein the messenger rna size is going to be 3000 why it's going to be 3000 because three nucleotides they form one amino acid so so when there are thousand amino acids so we are going to multiply it with the three and we will have three thousand nucleotides present in the messenger rna the messenger rna is about three to four percent of the total rna in the cell so only small amount is present but this small amount is very important because this is going to encode the proteins and that proteins they are going to perform the specific functions in the body now the second type of rna is 
tRNA. Here the T stands for the transfer. So as the name indicates, it's going to transfer something from one part of the cell to another part of the cell. The transfer RNA is going to transfer amino acid molecules to the site where peptide chains are being synthesized. The peptide chains mean the protein is going to synthesize. So it's going to carry the amino acids and then going to take the amino acid from one part of the cell to the part of the cell where the protein is going to be synthesized. Here you can see the transfer RNA has this shape. Here it has this anti-cord. This cord is going to bind with the messenger RNA and here is the amino acid which is going to be transferred or which is going to be carried by the transfer RNA to the site of the protein synthesis. Here you can see this is transfer RNA and this transfer RNA is going to bind with the mRNA by the help of this anticord here. These are bound with each other and then the protein is going to be synthesized. The transfer RNA they are small in size and their length is 75 to 90 nucleotides only here you can see that it is very small in size it comprises of 10 to 20 percent of the cellular rna the last type of rna is rrna here the r stands for the ribosomal rna the ribosomal rna is strongly associated with the ribosomal proteins where 40 to 50 percent of it is present this is ribosome and inside this ribosome the ribosomal RNA is going to be attached. It acts as a machinery for the synthesis of protein. Here you can see this part here. This is going to be the ribosomal RNA to which the messenger RNA and the transfer RNA are going to bound and then help in the translation or the production of protein. On the surface of the ribosome, the mRNA and transfer RNA molecules they are going to interact to translate the information from genes into specific proteins. Here you can see this is G and then we will have the protein. The major portion of RNA in the cell is actually the ribosomal RNA and it is made up of 80% of the total RNA. It means that the largest amount of RNA is present in the form of ribosomal RNA. RNA. So that was all about RNA and its type. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video.